I'm ready to go. I'm here. Seven o'clock and we're live and I'm here. And I've been trying to do things with the camera angle. Did it like this angle a couple of weeks ago and then did it straight on last week and thought this one looked better. I don't know. But uh, not happy with those papers up there. A bit rubbish, don't they? But if I put my head there, if I keep my head like that, maybe I should have moved the camera. Anyway, okay, I've gone back to the normal. Um, I've gone back to the normal thing because I did a funny one last week with uh, you're supposed to share the screen and have the people on, but it didn't go very well. Um, I had all sorts of problems. I was nearly late. Let me just uh, show the viewers at home what this is. Sorry. How often is it you say, oh, every Tuesday, 7 p.m.? Um, so we've got, um, got a few questions here, but as ever, please comment and share. Um, but we have got a few questions which I have got lined up and programmed into my system. Because, you know, I have been uh, preparing for this. We've got a question about rotation of implants. Another question which I couldn't read very well because I wrote it down made myself. I think it's something about sensation of, um, of implants. What is that? What is that? <laughs> I haven't seen that emoji, Terry. I like it. Don't know what it means. I hope it's not rude. Um, I think it was sensation of implants and um, what else? Fat graft. Yeah, big, long list of questions. I hope the person who asked those questions is on. Um, I have answered them, but it, I, actually I have to remember all the questions she asked. But old stuff about fat grafting with pectus excavatum and breast implants and things. And what else? Oh, yeah, flat mole. Flat mole. Uh, right. So jump in. Number one. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I thought I thought I answered this, but I obviously didn't because this person asked a couple of weeks ago. And so sorry about that. I didn't answer it. Um, is that what it means you're watching? OK, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the emoji, Terry. Thank you. So rotation of teardrop implants. And I think this patient was saying, is it a problem? Rotation of teardrop implants. Simple answer is yes. This is a patient who's actually got teardrop implants. I think she was hoping I would say it's not. Does this angle look good? Um, um, someone at the door, but it's okay. Uh, rotation teardrop implants. So yes, it uh, it is a problem, unfortunately, and uh, teardrop implants can rotate because they are fuller in the lower pole. Oh, probably got one over there, but anyway, so they can sort of rotate and look not right. So that is a complication you get with teardrop implants. You don't get with round implants. So it's something to consider if you're having teardrop implants. It's something to throw into the mix. Teardrop implants do give a softer look in the upper pole, um, especially if you haven't got much breast tissue. I think they are useful to give a more natural result. Sometimes you can get a natural result, particularly in someone who has got some breast tissue, and particularly if it's in the lower pole of the breast with a round implant. So you can get a natural result with a round implant. But um, teardrop implants, I think, do have a place. I think you'll find that plastic surgeons are divided with teardrop implants. Some people say, I don't use them at all because a round implant sort of goes teardrop when you stand up. Some people use them a lot. Um, I'm a bit in, I'm a bit in between, I suppose. I do use teardrop implants, um, um, and I do use round. Um, but yeah, I talked to everyone about the risks. It, there are polyurethane implants and silicone implants. Polyurethane implants are much less likely to rotate compared to silicone implants. So if you're on the fence between polyurethane and silicone, and you want a teardrop implant, that might be a plus for polyurethane implants. Um, but it is a problem, and it is. Uh, hard to treat the one thing is uh, you will know that you've got it so I wouldn't go you know we don't go looking for it if you don't feel that you've got a um uh a, a if your implant is rotated then um it's it's fine um but if it is rotated you can't really do anything about it apart from go back to theater in the old days we used to do um external version trying to sort of um ro re de rotate it externally I say we I've never done it Older surgeons might have done it, not young people like me. Um, you know, spring chickens like me, we don't know what that is all about. But the older ones, obviously the older surgeons might have done that. But uh, us youngsters, uh, we don't do that sort of thing anymore. I think it's quite uncomfortable and it's not a 
good thing to do. It's widely thought of. So um, yeah, go back to theatre, derotate it. But it's a problem because um, I'm just looking at yes, yeah, so I've got. <laughs> Looks like I've got a picture of a brick wall, or like an image of a brick wall out my window, but uh, there is a goal, but it's you can't see it. Hmm. Yeah, we have to work on that camera angle, but um, I'm a professional, so I'm pushing through. Um, it is a problem, and it's something that can happen. It doesn't, I mean, it's just a risk, you know, it can happen, and there's stuff that can be done if it happens. So don't worry about it too much, particularly if you've already got the root. The, 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 I'm sure we spoke about it before you got the implants, but uh, particularly if you got the implants, it's just something that can happen. Um, good. So I think this question was about sensation after having implants, um, sensation of the skin. And the sensation of the skin can be altered when you have breast implants, both the sensation of the skin and the sensation of the nipple. And by altered, I mean it can either be numb or it can be hypersensitive, it can be overly sensitive. And out of those two, actually, hypersensitivity is worse than numbness. If you do get hypersensitivity, then we advise you to desensitize it, to sort of massage it and touch it, to try and desensitize it and make it quite a, a little bit less sensitive. Um, but sensation can be altered after breast implants. You have all sorts of funny things. People feel like there's vibrations. People feel like there's water running on their breath. There's all sorts of weird sensations that you can get when you do put breast implants in because all the nerves have been stretched. Now, this usually comes back to life. Now, I pretty much always use what's called an inframammary incision, which is an incision at the sort of base of the breast. So I don't actually cut through any breast tissue. Uh, when you do an infraareolar incision, you do cut through some breast tissue. So there's more of a risk of sensation, particularly around the nipple, because some of the nerves might be cut with an infraareolar than there is with an inframammary. Um, but uh, so it's, I don't actually cut through any breast tissue, but um, the, breath, the nerves are stretched feel weird and it does take a while to come back to life i normally say it can take nine to twelve months for it to come back to life it may not come back to life usually it does i've never had anyone who's got a long-term problem with sensation i've got a lot of people who have short term not problem but comment on it that it all feels weird um but long term i never had anyone with a problem with it and i think either that's because it one gets better or two you start to live with it a bit and it feels sort of um it, you just it feels okay and it's not a, a problem but it is something that can happen again another thing um about uh, to be aware of uh the sensation can be altered in the breast but it usually comes back to life it can take up to about a year or so for it to really come back to life properly oh, i missed one here um I'm going to go with this one because I haven't, I haven't typed in the next question so can you remove a flat mole i've had this question um, um, quite a lot. Well, I'll say quite a lot a couple of times uh, recently. Um, for me, it's like, for me, it's like, um, of, you know, yes, you can remove a flat mole. I think the reason what's happened is we've done um, a few videos um about shave excision of moles like how you can incise them basically you can either do a shave excision or a mole or sort of cut it out now a shave excision of mole is where you take a sort of scalpel and take it off at the, at the level of the of the skin so you, a shave excision has to be a raised mole you can't do a shave excision of a flat mole but that doesn't mean you can't excise it to remove a flat mole because with a flat mole you can excise it in fact with a raised mole you can excise it so a raised mole you've got an option to either excise it or shave it um a flat mole you have to excise it so the decision is only there for raised moles and there are good and bad about shaving shaving can leave sort of less volume of scarring because it just leaves a, a scar the size of the base of the lesion um the problem with shaving is it sometimes the pigment if it's a brown mole the pigment's left behind so you get a flat sort of brown patch and sometimes if you've got hairs the hairs can remain so you have a sort of flat the, the mole's not there but they might if sometimes you get if you've got dark hairs in your moles those might still be there if you do a shave excision the other important thing to say is that if you're worried about skin cancer you wouldn't do a shave excision so if you've got a raised lesion or mole that is concerned that it's a skin cancer you should not do a shave excision. You should do a, an, an, a formal excision where you completely take the whole depth of it out because they need to see the whole specimen, the whole um, depth of the specimen. So if there's any worry about skin cancer, you should have it excised. If it's flat, you should have it excised. But if it looks benign, 
and it's raised, you have the option for a shave excision, which is something we can talk about. But you certainly can remove a flat mole, no problem at all. Um, but it would have to be a size, which would leave you a linear scar. Um, and, you know, that's something we can talk about in the clinic. So, a little bit worried here. I'm on my... Oh, whoa, why is that so big? Boom! How'd that work? How do I do that? Small. 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 Boom! Okay, fat grafting to breast. All right. Don't know why that one's so big, but um, I should actually try and find that question that patients asked. Um, but I should have done that before, really, shouldn't I? So um, I'm on my last question here, which is slight. Of a, here we go which is of slight concern. Um, um, but I'm going to drag it out, my friends. Okay. Um, so fat grafting to the breast. We got a list. We got seven quests, seven subheadings for fat grafting the breast. Dr. Stiano is topping my list of possible UK surgeons. Do you hear that? Topping the list. But compared to others, I found it difficult to find examples of his breast fat transfer results. If I were to come up for a 15 minute consultation, would I be able to see before and after photos? Um, yes, you're quite right. You are. It, I haven't got many before and after photos on the website or any, probably. I, I, I don't even know. Have I got a page on fat grafting on the website? Um, I haven't got much on fat grafting on the website um, because um, basically, I don't do much fat grafting nowadays because nowadays I do cosmetic breast surgery. I love fat grafting. I think fat grafting is great, and I used to do it an awful lot. And when I was in the NHS, I was uh, doing breast reconstruction after cancer, and I did fat grafting all the time. Probably every week I was doing a fat grafting case, and I got fantastic results, and I loved it. And I thought it was a fantastic technique, and it was brilliant um but now i pretty much only do cosmetic breast surgery and that's what this person's talking about cosmetic breast surgery and on paper fat grafting seems great injecting some fat from your you know tummy or somewhere and injecting into your breast no need for an implant fantastic isn't that great but in reality it is not um it is it has got its limitations and the main limitation is the volume of fat that you can inject and the reason for that, because I'll just go through, I won't go through questions one, because that's what she talks about, about how much, what's the average result we get, fat transferred, etc. cetera. So um, the volume of fat, it depends on the donor size, as where you take the fat from. And often patients who are wanting breast implants have got a very slim, so they haven't got much donor sites, so not much take place, places where you can take the fat from. You can usually find somewhere, tummy, thighs, somewhere like that. Um, but number two, when you inject the fat, you don't, need to, you don't want to inject it into the breast, because if you get, fat necrosis if the fat dies you get calcifications and you know pretty i think the radiographers and the radiologists are pretty good at knowing what cal dead fat is as opposed to breast cancer but it is a bit of a worry having calcifications within the breast so you you inject the fat into the layer above the breast so from the skin to the breast and beneath the breast so the breast and the muscle so you're trying to inject the fat around the breast so you limit it to where you can inject the breast because again uh, inject the fat because again people who are requesting this have usually got small breasts that's why they want breast enlargement and so that volume of space where you can put it is limited and each piece of fat needs to be surrounded by healthy tissue otherwise it will die so it has to be surrounded by healthy fat so it's, it takes quite a long time you have to inject very small aliquots of fat in it takes quite a long time and the results are subtle that's the thing i mean i have done it and i have done it recently but the results are subtle and so i really do it in cases of asymmetry if you're focusing on one breast or um in if there's sort of um contour deformities contour defects or if there's a knuckle of an implant or you can see ripples of an implant or something like that if there's a problem that you need to get some extra cut cover fat grafting is very good but the results are subtle so for cosmetic breast augmentations the results are subtle um it's less than a cup size and what you often have to do with patients is look at before and after photos quite closely next to each other and you can see a difference but I always think it's always you're always in a bit of a bad place if you're having to sit there with a patient with a before and after photos, sort of analyze it to convince them that they've got um, a good result. So um, 
you know, I think it is subtle. It is a good thing on paper. It's great because um, because it's you don't have to have the long term effects of implants. But because it's subtle, it often has to be, often has to be repeated. It is uh, expensive. So, um, you know, it's not cheap. And so you have to be aware what you're going to get and if you that you're going to get um, a subtle results. As long as you're happy, you know, with that, and getting it repeated and things, then fine. But in my experience, um, you know, it's hard to beat implants. You know, implants, you can get a 250cc, 300cc implant off the shelf, put it in, takes an hour, fine. With fat grafting, one or 200 cc's is a lot, and that's total. So that means 50 to 100 cc's per breast. You know, you get a 250 cc implant straight away, that's 500 cc's very easily, whereas that would be five, potentially five operations with fat grafting, each of which costs several thousand pounds. So it is a good thing. It is fantastic um, uh, uh, technique. I used to do it a lot. I don't do it so much now because I do cosmetic augmentation. You can't see many photos on my website because I haven't got many cases for cosmetic augmentations. My cases are asymmetries are of breast reconstructions um, because I talk like this to patients when they come to ask me for fat grafting. And, um, you know, I try and be realistic about the results that I can achieve. So, yeah, it's fantastic to hear that I'm top of, topping the list of UK surgeons, but I'm sorry that I'm not being that positive about it. I'm just trying to be realistic about my uh, experience with it. Um, so that's where I'm at, I'm at with it. You know, happy to talk about it, happy to do it, but you've got to be realistic about what you can achieve. Um, the other uh, same page about uh, mild to moderate pex, pectus excavatum. Pectus excavatum is a, a defect in the sternum in the sternum in the rib cage it's a it's a deficit in the rib cage um and uh, it's a very good technique for that so um you can we used to well people still do use uh, custom made silicone prostheses to to uh, fill that defect uh, but fat grafting is a very good alternative because the complications of uh, silicone implants are because these are not sort of like breast implants they're like solid silicone implants which are custom made you know based on a ct scan uh they can migrate they can you can feel the edges and things like that so they can cause problems the other thing for pectus excavatum is thoracic surgery that wouldn't be a plastic surgeon that'd be a thoracic surgeon um which is very good as well so i think that's a very good option if you've got pectus excavatum there are a few options you should probably see a thoracic surgeon to see about um uh thoracic surgery but um fat grafting is an excellent option and that would just be to fill the pectus um obviously sometimes patients not obviously but sometimes patients with pectus excavatum have breast implants don't have the pectus addressed and just accept it and just have breast implants to enhance their breasts and you know that's that's possible you've got to be careful sometimes because the chest wall can be tilted so when you enhance the breast when the chest wall is tilted sometimes you can enhance an asymmetry you know like ship going off course yeah you know? It can make the sort of nipples look a bit less level, and you know, if, if they're slightly tilted and you put implants in, so these things need to be aware of. Um, yeah, how common a calcification? Not that common. Uh, how often do you see patients retain little to none of the fat cells in the long run? None is uncommon, but little is, is common, it's often subtle, as I say, the results. Um, and will the 200 pound consultation fee be redeem redeemable against the cost of surgery no mm, no it's not um but we will refund the surgery if we can't help i mean refund the fee 200 pounds so i don't really want to take a consultation fee if i can't help so um we do our satisfaction guarantee um so that's um that is i should put that as a thing across the thing shouldn't i so that, that's, um, so, you know, satisfaction guaranteed. Um, so yeah, so we will give you the money back if we, if I can't help. So I'd be very happy to see you and see if I can help. And if I can't help, we'll give you your money back. But if I can, I'll, I'll have a, I'll have that go, I'll go, and, <laughs> so I'll go, I'll have a go. I will do the surgery. Oh dear. Um, we cut that bit. Um, right. Caroline, I, I, you know what, Caroline, I asked a question, I wrote down a question that you said, and I couldn't read my writing, and I think it was about feeling, 
I think it was says about feeling of implants. I said that earlier about feeling a sensation of implants. I think that's what you said, was it? But I did the rotation bit earlier as well. Caroline, we've got a question from Caroline coming in live, um, which is exactly what we want. And if I could do a thumbs up, I would. Can I do a thumbs up? Don't think I can. I'll tell you what I can do. I can do that. Hmm. It's not right, but it looks like a gas mask, doesn't it? Uh, I'll tell you what I can do, Caroline. I can do this. Okay, Caroline, I'm going to answer your question presently. First of all, I need to get that sorted out there. In fact, that doesn't look very good. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do is when I answer your question, I'm going to do that. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, that doesn't work. Right, that doesn't work. So without further ado, maybe a little... Oh, what's What's happening? Is that person crying? Oh, I didn't, sorry, I didn't. Without further ado, I'm going to ask so your question, and I just want to make it quite clear that I'm very happy that you've answered, asked me a question live, and that's how I make it clear. Why is that so small? Um, so, Caroline, that is what I'm talking about. Live questions, that's what we want more of. Okay, people? So I don't know if you're aware, but please comment and share, okay? Please comment and share because that's what Caroline's done, all right? So Caroline, oh, you asked, no, wait a minute. Hold on. Caroline, it's got another question here. I know I did Caroline, but let's just make out I didn't answer them. <laughs> um, right, um, another question What was, can you feel any abnormal lumps in your breast okay after implants? Caroline, brilliant. I wonder if I can come on myself as a, you know, ask. no. Can't can I? Get my son in the other room to ask some questions. So, Caroline, that's a very good question, and I get that a lot. Can you feel lumps, uh, breast cancer, and things like that when you've got implants in? People worry about that. They worry that um, they worry that the implant is going to be somehow hiding the um, a breast cancer, but that's not the case. And there is absolutely no problem with feeling lumps or any potential breast cancers in patients with breast implants in. We do use breast implants in patients who are high risk for breast cancer. We use patients who actually had breast cancer. We will put an implant in the other side if they're having a reconstruction and they want to be bigger so we can sort of enhance the normal breast as well as reconstructing the, the, um, the, the uh, mastectomy side. So um, there's no problem with put, putting implants in patients um, because it's not going to hide uh, in, uh, cancer, otherwise we wouldn't do it. Now, you can still feel lumps just the same because when you feel your breast, you're feeling the breast tissue, you're not feeling the implant. You might be able to feel the implant around the edges, sort of underneath and around the edges, but on this bit, this bit sort of behind the nipple is all is all your breast. So um, the only thing to say and the only thing we need to tell people who've got breast implants in is that uh, if you need any investigation, so if you need a scan or a biopsy or something like that, you need to let them know you've got implants in because they have to change the way they do the scan or if they do a biopsy, they have to do an ultrasound guided rather than just putting the needle in because they're worried they're going to damage the implant. So um, it is uh, totally fine and totally possible to investigate, but you need to be sure that um, you tell them. <laughs> right, so that's, you know what, I'm sure we did better last week. Um, anyway. <laughs> say that no you're a really good audience so much better than last week it's so it's really good this week um I shouldn't say that should i um but if anyone's got any no right is that gone quickly is that a quick one i don't know anyway um that's me i'm out i'm all out i'm not seeing any more comments uh if anyone's got any comments uh, do it do it comment please comment and share and if this is on a rerun i'll see it i'm sure and answer it and go over it next week uh but that's that that's me I'm, I'm all in um i hope you like my little where is it my little cartoon there no sorry i can't you can see it anyway the cartoon that's in the corner oh god it's all reversed there yeah that cartoon i hope you like my cartoon there uh no expense bed um right i'm i'm um checking out thank you all for your comments and your and your 
and your shares. Yeah. Um, thank you, Caroline. Uh, well, I like them all. In it. Thank you, Terry. Terry's given me a big, mouthy, laughing face. Um, I'm going to check out and I'm going to be here same time, seven o'clock next week, Tuesday night. Any questions, email me or Facebook me and I'll be very, very happy to answer them. But for now, have a lovely evening and uh, it's a beautiful evening out there. So get yourself out in the garden and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>